This time on Whatever We Want, we talk about which animation studio had the best first movie. There are time codes down in the description if you'd like to jump around the different points in the episode. We talk everything from the Lego movie to the SpongeBob movie, and not the good one. Enjoy! <laughs> Welcome back to Whatever We Want, where we review content across all media and media, movies, TV shows, video games, and beyond to give you the most interesting behind the scenes insights, storytelling techniques, all that jazz, and more. We go over everything from Disney, Pixar, DC, Marvel, so without further ado, let's jump right into it. Alright, boom, hello. So we're getting rid of pre-banter, potentially. We're testing it out this week mm -hmm, mm -hmm. before everyone freaks out. If you're new, you have no idea what we're talking about, but I was just thinking, and we were talking, I know we talked about this, Daniel, but we don't like the idea of, like, having, like, a, a string of news to go through that takes, like, 10-15 mm -hmm. minutes before we get to, like, what the title of the video is about. So we're gonna try to just, like, kind of jump into the main segment of the video. It's ironic because to explain that new concept, I have to not jump into the main segment of the video. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it might be a little bit of adjustment, a little bit weird. Like, it feels weird me not just screaming pre-banter immediately. Yeah. Action, I action, jump right into action. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> That's our new jingle. Action, action, jump right into action. Boom. <laughs> I like that, Daniel. Yeah. All right, new thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's so dumb. I love it. Yeah. Are you doing all right today? Oh, yeah. I'm doing pretty good. Are you ready to jump into, like, the main segment? I've got my yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Pixar shirt on today, so I'm, I'm repping. I'm rep ready. All right. Here we are. Main <laughs> segment. So we're talking about which animation studio had the best first movie. So I kind of have a list here. I mean, feel free to jump in and add yeah. whatever you'd like, but... Uh, I fig I figured first we should talk about Disney, right? Oh yeah, dude, of course. It's like the what if I was just like first we gotta talk about like this like a super obscure one like like Netflix animation <laughs> like right? Well, I thought <laughs> you were gonna be like first we gotta talk about Barry Studios, which is like the French animation studio that like started it all, like doing oh. like actual like hand animations and all. That no, kind of stuff. I I I didn't know that, but uh, we can talk about that eventually. <laughs> but I was just I was thinking like the main studios we can talk about i mean we can go into more of the history of animation but uh I, I was just drawing back on like my uh animation history courses from uh, college gotcha. where it's like i remember they're like, like what? i forget his name it was like some of the clown and he's like just some big clown with like a bozo could have been bozo Dude, honestly bozo the clown started all animation <laughs> you heard it here yeah. first <laughs> Um, but no, we're talking about yeah. Disney, um, who some consider to be clowns today. See that segue? Uh, oh! <laughs> but but the, so ah. back in the day, they were not considered clowns, really. I don't think. I don't know. I wasn't there. It was 100 years ago. It is crazy. <laughs> this is the 100th year of, of Disney. It was founded in 1923. Yeah. And technically, I think the first film was Steamboat Willie, but that's not the first like feature film. The first feature film I want to talk about is Snow White, which was the first feature animated feature film ever. So I think that... Mm -hmm. Bumps it up in cred at least a bit. Oh, yeah. But what do you think about Snow White? It came out in 1937 about it being like the first Disney feature It's interesting animated. to think about from this perspective, too, because this is the first case to where. Well, well, oh, God, I can't think of the name of it. Like the tales, what the, the tales of these are all. Of a Jedi? Coming from, no. Like fairy tales? <laughs> yeah, fairy tales, but there's a certain book that these are coming like from. Fables? I oh, is it like Aesop's something? Um, where did s the story. Of Snow White originate. I thought it was like some of the brothers or something like that. Or maybe it's from a German fairy tale or folk tale written by the Brothers Grimm. How did the you know Brothers Grimm? What the heck? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just imagining so, like it's two things like from the Fantastic Four, like Ben Grimm. It's Ben Grimm and his brother, like, <laughs> Jim Grimm or something like that. And they're just sitting writing like, and then seven dwarves came and started whistling. <laughs> to be honest, that would be something that would happen in the Marvel universe. Yeah. So. <laughs> maybe, maybe. The, I, I don't maybe there's some obscure comic or maybe we could like propose this, but yeah, the Grimm brothers because I mean Reed Richards is all about time travel in some instances. So maybe they go back in time and they so the, like so form there's a all the fairy tales. Of, yeah, there's a yeah, variant yeah, yeah. of Ben and he and goes back like, to that'd be weird. German authors. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, J Grimm's fairy tales it was published in eighteen twelve, which features the tale of Snow White as story number fifty-three. Okay, yeah, interesting. No, my point was, it's it's interesting to see that there's they're taking these old classic stories that were fairy uh -huh. tales fr from Brothers Grimm, but then doing it in a new way for from new thing. audiences to yeah. uh, interact with it. True. Uh, so it's a very interesting way to approach, like, how do we do an animation? Like, we could make our own project. Like, what well, you see now, like, people write their own concepts, uh -huh. create their own characters, but... They're like, hey, why yeah. don't we start off with something that already works? Yeah, I think that's smart, especially because animation was so new. There was, like, literally no animated feature before, I think, starting out with something that maybe at least some people were familiar with. Like, oh, yeah, I knew from Snow White from I heard that story when I was a kid. And it would be cool to see that as, like, a movie, which is already, like, this new thing on itself. I think that's really smart that they started with that. 
So as a movie, though, what do you think of like Snow White as like s- the first Disney movie? Do you think it was a good like kickoff? I think it. I mean, honestly, like fundamentally, it was financially because it like yeah. allowed everything to grow off of it. I mean, but, yeah, um, the fact that they're it's literally the hundredth year of Disney. I think proves that yeah. at least they, they whatever their first step was, it didn't lead to failure yet so that's pretty good <laughs> yeah and no it, i think it was it was really good for the time like it was it was amazing what they were able to do honestly just through animation grunt work yeah at the time because they didn't have the uh did they have the stacking no i don't um, think they i think that was around pinocchio is when they started that cause yeah. i remember i uh, seeing like one of the old disney um like behind the scenes things and i think yeah. that, like the opening shot pinocchio is the one they kept showing like look at this new technology so i don't think they had the stacking, like a cell, multi cell, like layer, multi cellular, yeah, camera. Right. It's, it's like for people that don't know, it's like this technique that you can use to shoot animation on different planes, so that it, like, kind of tricks the your camera. Your background it, will be moving. Is it'll do like parallaxing, so right, it'll right, be right. like your foreground's moving at a different speed than your background, so it looks like you're actually moving. So it gives it depth in animation, which is like very yeah. difficult to do. But this technique made it more achievable, which is really inventive and awesome but yes no way i don't think had i don't think had it i do want to say like i i don't know the full story behind snow way but i remember going down a youtube rabbit hole a couple years ago and i i don't think like especially back then like it was obviously a different time but i don't think they treated disney like th- their employees were treated that well especially like i don't think the voice actress oh, no. was even like invited to the premiere like who played snow white oh, really yeah i didn't I think, know that i think because she was like a woman at that time like oh she didn't get invited to the premiere which is just like crazy but i mean that was 1920 or 1937 it was like again a different time with everything um and i'm not trying to like make excuses for them but i think that's just crazy and that might honestly like lower it a little bit for me i not not the quality of the movie itself but just like the surroundingness of it i again don't know everything about it but i do remember that distinct fact that like there was some issue with like um the voice actress not getting the proper like payment or like recognition that she deserved like i don't even know if she was in like the credits until like years later or something like that i don't even know i don't know the full that's story crazy. but um well even if that is the case that's, that's just like that's messed up yeah i mean, I, I need to rewatch time for, being for the time like that's still yeah. i mean we know like back then like stuff was yeah just stupid but yeah, yeah that's just crazy I think um, Snow White, I don't think it's also, like, it's a classic, like, movie and classic story, but, like, I think I rewatched it a couple years ago, and, like, I, like it's not as complex as, like, movies of today, which totally makes sense, because it was, yeah. like, the first one in, like, years and years ago, but, like, because it, there's been a like, hundred years, almost, of, like, ways to develop animation and stories, this one kind of feels, like, very basic, which makes sense, because it's, like, the first one, so I will, like, yeah. kind of give it a little bit of leeway but that's something just i think to note in my consideration um yeah, but at the same time too i think that's kind of smart in that sense like not to i mean they're already doing a lot so like yeah i yeah, know i don't they, want them to be like let's take a stab at like a complex story arc in this snow white film for the first yeah. animated feature ever yeah, yeah no i wouldn't want that and then that also lends into their target audience because it was a lot of well, children a lot of people that were just trying to see it at the time but also yeah, yeah. mainly children so yeah, yeah. That, I think that also lends into it because you don't need to have a complex storyline for yeah. kids to watch and enjoy something. Yeah, so. you've got lovable characters like all the seven dwarves with like very distinct personalities, and then yeah. uh, the mirror and Snow White, of course. I love how I named yeah. the mirror before Snow White, the title <laughs> character. <laughs> Jake, are you sure you're not one of those old executives from back in the day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> um, uh. Yeah, I would give this as a first movie. I would give this like a solid nine out of ten. Like it, it ranking, like if this is like for the first movie, a first studio, I'm giving this like a nine out of ten. I, I was going to say eight point six to eight point seven. You know, I might drop to eight just because I don't think like the the story again is simple. That's minus one point, and then like the whole like they didn't treat the main actress for Snow White pretty well. I'm not I'm not going to be labor. looking at from like social regards because there's okay. a lot of dumb shit that we do with animation. I mean, talk about like overseas. Like, uh, helping out with, like, in-betweens and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Uh, like, you know, those you people like get that? paid. No, oh, like, they I... get paid less? Oh, I didn't realize it's, that. It's... Oh, yeah, dude, they get paid much less. That's why they do Dang. it. So, like, it's much cheaper to go have people... Oh. Like, you get your keyframes in... So, there's different stages to animation. Like, you have mm-hmm. your storyboards give you, like, your main beats, and then you right. have your keyframes, and then you have your, like, your blocking, right? Yeah. And then after that, well, no, blocking the keyframe, sorry. And then after that, you need to get your in-betweens in. So once you start 
doing that, you can do that yourself, but that takes a lot of time. And right. if you already have your keyframes there, why not just send them to people? That'll work across? for cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So okay. Well, I don't know if they did that for Snow White or not. I don't think. I think they did all their animation in house for Snow White. I don't. Th- I don't think it would be developed enough at the time for yeah. that uh, systemically. So it was probably all in house. But later on, that 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 is something that's very um, that became problematic as the animation industry grew. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, I think it's interesting because there's not many like animation studios that popped up right around, at least that are still around today, that popped up right around the time of Disney. I think like a lot of what I've heard is like Disney popped up and then like Mm -hmm. kids started seeing that happen as they were growing up and then uh, started getting interested in that stuff and wanting to do that when they were older. But it took like a whole generation for them to like be inspired by Disney in like the 30s and then grow up and it's not till like the like kind of 80s when like more animation studios that like a lot of them that are around today kind of started popping up then um which is very interesting interesting to think about yeah because like it's not just a generation there that's like almost two generations if not more well Um, because i think no one it's interesting I, i mean i don't this is my theory but like i was reading again the history of pixar and i think back in like the 60s ed catmull like had the idea and wanted to do like some computer CG like animation but thing. But he couldn't yet because the technology yeah. wasn't there well, yet. He couldn't because technology and also no one wanted to fund that because like Disney was like the outlier. Yep. There was no other like proven like, yes, you can make animated films. It was just like Disney was like this weird outlier that was like making money. No one was like, let's also try that. Like why would we compete with Disney? Like so I think it was a combination of like the technology wasn't readily available and no one wanted to fund it because like why would they? And then it kind of took a lot of grinding and like, look, and a lot of like passion, like people doing it without being paid to be like, look, this does yeah. work. I know thing, about that. Which is enter Pixar. <laughs> yeah. I've got my yeah. Pixar shirt on now. Nice, dude. 1986. Well, again, we were just talking about the history of Pixar a little bit. I think that's fascinating. We should do a full episode on that. Oh, but, yeah, we definitely should. Yeah, uh, yeah. Toy Story was their first film. Uh, actually, also, sorry, going back a little bit. I said Pixar was founded in 1986. Technically, that's when it was formed and like bought by Steve Jobs to be an animation studio it first was a computer division that was formed yep. at lucasfilm to do develop computers to do visual effects that he wanted to sell to other movie execs movie studios um but it was just like super impractical because they were like super specialized and expensive that they um and also the people working at this division just wanted to make animated movies like they hired john Lasseter when they were there to like make movies on the side and george lucas was like what are you doing like this is not what we hired you to do <laughs> Yeah, so then it was bought by Steve Jobs, and they formed Pixar years later in 1986, as we know it today-ish. Yeah. And then it took another almost 10 years for Toy Story to come out in 1995. So, Toy Story, what are your thoughts on that? It is an amazing, beautiful film, and great introduction to what is, was the introduction to 3D. Like, yeah. It, it, it was just beautiful. It was beautiful, like the story, and also in understanding the limitations that they had with technology at the time. You bring up this point a lot to where they didn't do a lot of like human characters because they were they didn't have texture quality like what we have now. Yeah. So people looked like plastic every time they tried to render like skin. Yeah, it looked like plastic. So they were like, so they were like, well, let's make a <laughs> story around things that look like plastic. What's plastic? Toys. So sex toys. toys. And, then, and they were like, we can't make a kids oh, movie Jesus. out of that. All right, <laughs> regular toys. <laughs> Dude, imagine that. Imagine that if. It was- I mean, they, they, they named him Woody and Buzz. Like, <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Oh, <laughs> uh, God, that was such a good one. I mean, technically, also, I'm thinking about, oh, thank you. But um, the, uh, before, like, again, remember I was saying John Laster was hired back during when they were still Lucasfilm before they were bought by Steve Jobs and became like just Pixar. John Laster did like a short film called The Adventures of Andre and Wally B. Um, yep. which was like one of the first like, CG like 3D test renders films. Yeah. yeah. And this, this yeah. was, so they did like test renders before, like Ed Catmull did like that famous scan of his hand. Yeah. And they also did like a very short sequence in um, a, a New Hope that was like the 3D rendering of the Death Star with like points. Yeah. But this was a big turning point. Ed Catmull said in his book for Pixar was when they hired John Lasseter and they made the adventures of Andre and Wally B because he was coming at it not thinking about like how do we improve the technology he was like how do we tell a good story and then the technology informed that and this was the first time pixar made like a film that had like a cohesive story and that was a big turning point so i think it's important to mention that it's not like yeah. their first feature film again it's like a short kind of like concept thing it's like two minutes but it's like the first step 
But yeah, the first feature yeah. film, 90-ish minutes, what, 85 minutes, something like that, was Toy Story, 1995. What Out of 10, what do you give it? 10, bro. Come on. <laughs> What do you get it? I, I'm being critical. I'm thinking about like that pizza guy that goes around and, like judges pizza and he's like, oh, you're going to give it like a flat number, you know? So I'm going to give it a nine. You've never seen that guy? Oh, oh, you mean the president of Barstool? <laughs> it might be him. Yeah, yeah that's I, the pizza. I, you just call him the pizza guy. <laughs> he's a pizza guy. Pizza well, time, you he's know? He's like a really famous uh, internet presence, I think. And now I'm biking on me- his name. D- Dave Portnoy is his name. Yeah, it's Barstool. Yeah. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> I like how when I said the pizza guy Barstool, it like returned <laughs> in Google. Literally, pizza guy Barstool. David uh, Partnay. Portnoy. <laughs> how, oh, Partnay. How say it? <laughs> you can tell Daniel. Does not <laughs> watch him often. But um, apparently well, enough no, to know his my, ranking <laughs> system. My point is, yeah, because, dude, pizza is important. I, I, I think pizza. Toy Story is a 10 out of 10. And he, though, for a first film. 9.4. Okay. Why? What could be improved? The only thing the dog could be improved, and this is really just like a nitpick on like, yeah, I want to see you do better. Like the in human aspect. <laughs> well, no, it's like they used Sid or not Sid. They used uh, Andy. Uh oh, like 50 for all times. the kids. Yeah, I think that's like, you funny. could give me some. They just re- they copied pasted the model. I think that's funny. I think it's a cool little Easter egg that now we're talking about today. Is it, well, it's not even, it's, it's an optimization thing, and I totally yeah. get it, especially for the technology that they had at the time. But really, really the only thing that's holding it back, I guess, would be the, the technology at the time. Right. I, I still think it was great. I think it was an amazing film. It is a nine point, actually, you know what? 9.8. 9. Okay. 8. I'm going to bump it up there. Got it. Because um, if it's only technology bumping it back, I, I got to give it some extra yeah. umpage for that. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Some extra umbrage. Yeah. Thou shalt not tell lies. Um, all right. So yeah, Pixar is currently winning for the best first film. Again, I think I think it does. We also have to acknowledge that all of these ones that have come after Disney have the lessons of Disney that they're standing on. So like none of these would be here without yeah. Disney. We can't like not acknowledge that. So technically, if we're like, what's the best one? Disney. Technically, if you're like, because none of these other ones would exist without it. But like, if we're just analyzing like in a bubble each one, right now I'm saying Pixar has the better first film because it was just like it blew oh, yeah. everyone away. And, but like, I, I know I'm go- sorry, I'm going back because like Disney uh, at this point had gotten stale because that was all everyone had. So this was like able to shake up the market because of Disney. So like, he's laying the foundation yeah. for everything. But yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, next, I got DreamWorks on this list. Mm-hmm. Was founded mm-hmm. 1994. DreamWorks SKG. I just found out. I feel so dumb. I think I probably did this before, but SKG stands for Spielberg, Katzenberg, and Geffen, who were like the three founders of of DreamWorks. I had no idea. I think I just, you told me you told me that before. Yeah, I, my boss so. told me about it last week because her ex husband works for DreamWorks, and I was like, oh, you're like, oh, oh that makes sense. I, I just thought it was DreamWorks just randomly. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, their first movie was Ants. Oh, dude, I forgot about that. I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i you forgot because they hit they sh- i think, think it was, was like shrek or something like that shrek, dude there was like a couple movies there was like prince of egypt and stuff i think before shrek 2. yeah i forgot shrek about that as too. well not shrek 2 i mean it was also the, before shrek the, 2. there's reasons why i remember shrek because shrek was because shrek, shrek was, was the good the best the first good dreamworks one i think i mean no, i yeah. think prince of egypt is also like fantastic i've heard i haven't seen it but um yeah what do you think about ants <laughs> okay so ants uh it was just a ripoff of bug's life which is kind of the point of it i think it's funny because but, the fact that the first movie was just a ripoff that kind of elevates it i'm like wow how petty do you have to be like that's kind of hilarious <laughs> but it also the, wasn't good so it, yeah it wasn't good it was it was mid at best but it had a good cast they had a good cast and the rendering is actually pretty well done um yeah compared to, like, to what was going on at pixar sylvester stallone so, jennifer yeah. lopez Christopher Walken. Hey, I'm a. Oh, the guy aunt. from Ghostbusters was in there. Yeah, no, I had a really good cast. I'm trying to remember the plot of it because I remember there was, I remember this point where they got to like a picnic thing. When did the ant bully come out? Because I always confuse these two. Oh my god, dude, don't get me started. Oh, that was 2006. Bully. Oh, Nicolas Cage was in Ant Bully. Oh my god. <sighs> my one, my one. Oh, the professor. kid that played Avatar, the last Airbender, was Zach Tyler Ice. Sin, he was in the Ant Bully. Oh, he was in Ant Bully? Yeah, and same with Bruce Campbell. Meryl Streep was in Ant... Julia yeah, Roberts? I knew that what one. What the heck? Dude, freaking... My, my, so I had a professor that worked on that, and he would not shut the f- up about it. About who? So, Julia Roberts? But, or just, just the movie just, in no, general? He didn't get to meet them. He just was like... He was an animator, so he's, you know, oh, doing yeah. stuff. 
but he would not shut up about it. Actually, I think at that time he was doing concepting for them. So he was drawing up like the boards and and uh interesting. Doing, doing like environment concepts and stuff like that. I could be wrong cool. on that. To be fair, I when he started talking about it, he talked about it so he many times. Out. I I think no, it's not even just zoning out. Like you you purposely like block it, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. It was one of those ones. Gotcha. Yeah. So is it because of that do you think of ants uh, okay, well, I think we need to rank, do do a short ranking here, okay? We have Ant Bully, we have Ants, then we have Bugs Life, okay? What what's, Which one's best to worst for you? Dude, you I like, give it numbers. I'm struggling to remember Ant Bully and Ants, so I'm going to say Bugs Life, just because I, I know... Say, if you don't say Bugs Life first... Well, I think that, also that, just that... the fact that Ants was like a ripoff of Bugs Life, like, I can't, in any good conscience, and also it's just not a better movie, I can't put it above and like that, so I'm going to say Bugs Life... Just because I remember Ant Bully slightly more, I might say Ant Bully. And then Ants is like, Ants and Ant Bully are just kind of like floating at the bottom there. I don't even remember Ant Bully. I, I, I honestly really. couldn't even tell you tell you the animation style. Like, I know it's 3D, but like, I can't remember like the. Let me Google that quick. Hold on. Maybe, maybe we'll you jog know, my memory. You know, I think Ant Bully kind of looks about the same as Ants. As Ants. And because it came out like 10 years later, I might have to give it to Ants. <laughs> I might give it to Ants just because it's the, their first feature and it led to Shrek, you know? Yeah. So I'm going to give it to Ants and then Ant Bully. Hold on. These characters look so similar. Hold on. There's that and then there's Ants. They literally look like the same color theme and everything. Ants has a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes? What the heck? Oh, that's a tomato meter. That's a critic score. Audience score is 52%. Okay, never mind. I will say this. The, the character modeling in Ant Bully does look better. The one in Ants is like really just weird. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I'll say... I'm going to say Ants above Ant Bully. Same. Anywho. I will as well. Okay, cool. But so for Ants, just Ants as itself, as a first DreamWorks film, I'm going to say it's like it got the job done where it like laid the groundwork because we wouldn't be in this DreamWorks renaissance yeah. room right now. And it laid the groundwork. Like it sucks that it came from like... a. Pe- it's funny that it came from like a place of being like really petty against Disney. But then I think they f- outgrew that and then became... Uh, like, did amazing things with Shrek, Kung Fu Panda, How to Train Your Dragon. We got all those amazing franchises. So, because it laid the groundwork for that. As a first movie, though, on its own, it's not that great for me. I, I don't go I'm, back and watch this one. So, I'm going to say, like, 5 out of 10. I was going to say 5.4. And the reason for that is because it's really speaking out with its with the actual technical animation uh-huh. and with the rendering. That's really what was really selling it for that movie at the time. Okay. Everything else kind of just meh. Right now, my ranking is... Uh, Pixar, Disney, DreamWorks. Yeah. All right. Next. I think it's pretty fair. On my list, I've got Blue Sky. I was going to say Blue Sky. If you don't bring up Blue yeah, Sky, of course, my guy. Bro. So this is a weird one because it was technically founded in 1987 before DreamWorks and like a year after Pixar, like the studio was. But then their mm-hmm. first film wasn't until 2002 with Ice Age. It's interesting. I was just thinking like that's also interesting. They weren't founded... Like, the company wasn't founded as a result of, like, seeing Toy Story being like, oh, we can make money off this. They, they like, formed a studio independent of seeing Toy Story and then mm. eventually, like, made a film. Uh, but, yeah, what are your thoughts on Ice Age? I love Ice Age. And I also love what this did for expansion into, like, what kind of stories can be told. What do you mean? Well, this time, like, like we were seeing a lot of things that were familiar-esque, right? Like, this was some, this was, like, a really good story... What came out first, this or, like, Ants or Bugs Life or any of those ones? Ants and Bugs Life all did, because this came out 2002. This came out after Shrek, actually, like a year after Shrek. Really? I remember this being before. That's interesting. No, no, Ice Age uh, was 2002. I was going to say, it was just interesting to me, because I remember this one. I remember seeing this first, and I always thought of this being, like, like an introduction to, like, a non-human or humanoid-type character. Which I guess Uh, even that can still be true with Ants, because they're still humanoid, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, with the character cast that we have in Ice Age, like, you have to think about different aspects of animation. Like, how do these creatures move? Uh, what are their intents? And, like, what what kind of stylization can we bring into what they're doing and how does it impact the story? Like, the way that Sid moves and how he acts and how he talks is mm-hmm. very different than Manny, you know? Yeah. So, it's just interesting to see, like, how they're able to play off each other with that, but with it being with the whole character instead of it just being, like, a humanoid that has to do things a certain way. If that yeah. makes sense. What do you, so besides just like the design itself of like the animation, do you think Ice Age like story wise or character wise did anything differently than like its predecessors like with 
Disney and stuff like that. Like it was kind of more sarcastic and jaded, which I guess DreamWorks was starting to do at this point. But I guess mm-hmm. this one was more like kind of crude, some crude humor kind of thing, maybe. Maybe that's what they were trying to set up themselves apart for. Yeah, and I, and I liked seeing, seeing an expansion into that as well. Yeah, yeah. Like to where, where it's something where it's, it's still definitely aimed at kids, but a wider audience can yeah. still enjoy it. But Sid, yeah. like freaking in the hot tub with those girls, <laughs> like the yeah. girls lost. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Like moments like that, that like allow people to be like, oh. Yeah. Oh. I'll give, I'll give Ice Age a solid like 6.7 to 7.3 out of 10. Mm-hmm. Really? You put it higher? I was going to put it at like... I'll say 7.8. 7. 7. 7.3 is my... I'm solid with that. 7.8. Because like it didn't do anything to like wow me. And we'd already seen like a couple... What's it called? Ones before. Like decent ones kind of similar to this before. Um, but this this is, I think, a solid first film for Blue Sky. Unfortunately, Blue oh, Sky yeah, is also not know. around anymore. So I have to consider that. Yeah, that's also very sad. You know? um, yeah. Because they were acquired by... Disney, I think. Disney? Was it Disney or DreamWorks that acquired Oh, uh, the second movie was Robots that they did? Oh, yeah. Dude, I didn't know Blue Sky did Robots. Yeah, dude, I love Robots. Oh, robots my was gosh. amazing. Still is amazing. They did Spies in Disguise. That was their last movie. Oh, my gosh. Dang, Robot. I love Robots. Dude, Robin Williams is fantastic in Robots. Oh, I didn't bring this up when we were talking about, um. oh, God, what movie? What Ants? movie was it? One of the ant three ant movies we talked yes, about. Yes, ants. So do you imagine? That's, the, so the, I'm just thinking the Ant Man trilogy versus the ants like animation trilogy, <laughs> like Bugs Life, ants, <laughs> ant bully. Well, no. Here's the thing with ants, and later on with like uh, Monsters Inc. and all that. Yeah. Around that time, they're also doing a lot of 3D games uh, for like PlayStation and so on at the time. So for me, that really like I had like a lot of the games that came from those movies as well. So I don't know. That also gives me a different imprintation about like how those uh-huh. how, like Pixar like uh, imprinted me. I guess you could say as like growing yeah, up. Yeah. Because it's like kind of like a double whammy. Like you get the film, and then I'm able to like actually go and be the characters that's like themselves yeah. and like go on these different adventures. So yeah. Yeah. I uh, also forgot to mention. I just verified this, but. I think it's also it's funny, but also I, I kind of like have a sour taste in my mouth from ants because it was so petty because they just I remember the reason it's lower on my list is because I remember they rushed it out. So like they were kind of sacrificing quality for speed. They rushed it out because they wanted to get it out ahead of Bugs Life to like hurt Bugs Life performance, which they successfully did. Like they put it out October 1998 and then bugs life released november 1998 so like i think they started development after bugs life and then rushed it to get out r- rushed to get ants out beforehand so that audiences would be like well i just saw a movie about ants like well, i'm not gonna go see bugs life and like that legit happened so i think this That's is so, so crazy all i like, think about was paul rudd just go ants yeah <laughs> ants <laughs> it's just crazy like how petty these people are and they're like playing with like multi-million dollar movies like that's that's just so crazy. makes you think of like old kings dude like oh you 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 sent the wrong wrong supplies to my city we're gonna like go and like throw shit over your walls like i don't know like <laughs> yeah <laughs> dude it's crazy oh my gosh i didn't realize uh apparently bugs life was 120 million dollars to make and ants was 60 million dollars interesting that's a lot of damage yeah all right, we should we should get get away from ants. We're, we're, we're yeah, true, about true, ants. true. Uh, well, <laughs> we talked about Ice Age. We ranked rank that right. I said like a seven point three. Yep. All right. Right now, my ranking is Disney. Sorry, Pixar with Toy Story, Disney, Snow White, Ice Age, Blue Sky, and then DreamWorks with Ants, which sucks because I love DreamWorks yeah. and what they're doing now, the Renaissance they're in. Yeah. Like that first one was just not a good first. Step. It was a hard hit, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they took a while to get their footing, but they they got on the right path. Yeah. And next, speaking of having some missteps, we've got Sony, uh, which has had some some missteps mm. with uh, some emoji related movies. But their first one, so they were founded, Sony, Sony Animation was founded in 2002. Their first film was Open Season in 2006. Oh, yeah. I totally forgot about that, yeah. dude. I love this one. This is like, I love Open Season. I would season. consider this like a childhood cult classic. Like, I know a lot of kids who I think would be like, yeah, Open Season was great, but like, not many other people like if you grew up if you were born between like 1995 to like 2003 you'll be like yeah open season 
<laughs> I mean, 1995 might be too early because then you'd be like 11 when this came. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe but yeah. What do you think of Open Season? I thought it was amazing. It was great. The big thing I'm remembering about this one is color. Honestly, like the yeah? sharp contrast. Like I'm remembering like the bright warm oranges when you're out in the woods and you like it was the morning time like sequence and all that. Or then later on like when they get lost and then like. They're just going through the woods and they get attacked by squirrels, like the bright greens, like the <laughs> so you just like browns. The color saturation. <laughs> well, no, like, you're like, it's like ah, bright colors. Yes. Well, no, it's like what, as an artist now, it's what I'm remembering the most. Also, yeah. just the character stylization, I think, was also very. Yeah, good. they did have pretty cool character designs. I I just found out the freaking. Do you know who played the freaking deer? Uh, it's somebody that's famous. I know, but I'm blanking. Yeah. Who is it? It's Ashton Kutcher. I had no idea yeah. that he played the deer. Like, what? <laughs> That's crazy. That's cool. Good for him. Um, just j- it goes up a few points alone because of Ashton Kutcher, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it's a good out of the gate strong. I think Sony has kind of struggled in years after that to kind of find their footing and their place in this. Uh, but I think recently they've had it's some good. good... That they have Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, I think it's recently they didn't they've own had Spider-Man, some good they... steps <laughs> with... Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, they've had good steps with Spider-Man, uh, like Spider-Verse, and um, uh, Mitchell's versus Machines as well. I think they're kind yeah. of finding their footing and getting some good films out there. Yeah, but then they definitely. have the Emoji movie too, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, uh, I, have, I haven't seen it. I'm happy I haven't seen it. I feel like I need to see it as an animator. Dude, I remember... Animation degree. I think I've have I've you seen it? From, yes, I think I've talked about this on the podcast before. Where like my perception to movies depends on where I'm viewing it. So like I saw the Emoji movie at a drive-in, and I was like, I love the drive-in. And then after I left, I was like, that wasn't half bad because I was like, I just had a good time with the drive-in. And then I thought about the actual movie itself, and I was like, nah, that was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> but I just like being at the drive-in so much. That's why I'm kind of weird about Elementals, that the new Pixar one. Yeah, because it just seems like it's I don't know. I just think it's going to be bad. I think Maybe it's going to be really bad. Just watch the drive-in. You'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what do you rank open season out of 10? Um, I'm going to say that that one's actually probably going to be like a 7.3. Really? Lower than uh, Ice Age? Yeah. I feel like I'd sooner I value Ice Age more than open season. Open season had a lot going for it at the yeah. time because of the technology as well. Uh, a lot of developments have been made for like modeling and making things a little bit easier for artists. But, yeah. Um, no, I think Ice Age is more impactful. Yeah, I think I'd rather sooner yeah. go back and watch Ice Age versus Open Season. So I guess I'll put Ice Age. I like I, I Open Season. I like Open Season though. Like I just I, I think I need to rewatch it and then be like actually I do too. good. <laughs> but uh, I, I'll put it like a dude the bear a, trainer lady seven point one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Next on our list, we've got Illumination, uh, which was founded mm-hmm. later in the game. This is interesting. 2007. Yeah. Um, and then its first movie was Despicable Me. So what do you think about Despicable Me? Despicable Me, I liked how it was... Well, they, they like to... All I'm thinking about is Minions, dude. And I dude, hate Minions. I, I know. I love... <laughs> I'll say I love the first Despicable, Despicable Me. I think it's really solid. Yeah. I hate the 20 sequels that came after and that it led to all yes. that <laughs> that's literally where but that's we're not, exactly where my yeah. mind went to i was like this movie was pretty good i liked how they had like the archetype of like him being a villain but like him being like a yeah, good guy it's like you know? wreck it ralph but di- different when did wreck it ralph come out it was 2012 so this wreck it ralph before wreck it ralph wreck it ralph yeah was a weird sentence <laughs> <laughs> say that three times fast yeah. <laughs> so yeah no i like that like storytelling but, like, again, like, all I think about now when it comes to Despicable Me is... The Minions. Like, everything else that came after it. Yeah. Which is just... Despicable. <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> um, but I think as it's, like, standalone, like, if I'm trying to just completely ignore all the sequels and stuff, I think Despicable yeah. Me is a solid, a really solid kickoff movie for a studio. And, like, I mean, Illumination's doing Mario soon, and that looks pretty good, so I'm excited about oh, that. Oh, yeah. That but I think Despicable Me, dope. honestly, is, like, I mean, I think it's a better first, I think it's a really solid first movie, like, ignoring oh, yeah. everything else. That's... So I think I might rank it above Open Season, maybe even above Ice Age, honestly. I'm going to put it at... I think the story's tighter than Ice Age, honestly. It is tighter than Ice Age. I'm also thinking about, okay, so are we doing better movie or, like, how we are, how we would also watch them? It's up to you. It's your own ranking. I mean, I'm going to say 
movie wise for quality animation storytelling despicable me gets it but you would rather watch ice age i'd rather watch ice age but i'm going to put it at 8.2 yeah okay yeah yeah, that's fair i think i'm gonna put despicable me solid eight yeah but just so it's not a complete even number i'll say (laughs) 8.04 <laughs> just for you. <laughs> <laughs> imagine, imagine the pizza guy doing that. He's like, I got, I got to start yeah, going yeah. down decimals now. I've been to so many pizza places. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Wait, that'd be so funny if he gives it like pie. Like it's it's pie three point one four one five nine because it's a pizza pizza pie. Haha. <laughs> That would be good and bad because it's like yeah, that's yeah. such a low rate. <laughs> yeah, but it is never ending. Maybe he just starts going at out of five three point one four one five out of five. Yeah, so I'm just kind of trying to reassess. I think Pixar's still in my top. Yeah. Followed by Disney. I have to give Disney that number two spot, at least for now. I might then we be doing Illumination, then. Illumination, yeah. And then yeah. Blue Sky. Yep. Would you put DreamWorks above or below? I, could, I think Open Seas is a better movie than Ants. I think Ants is just so petty. I'm putting DreamWorks Ants at my bottom, I guess. You yeah, know, DreamWorks is bottom right now. For for first first movies, that's understandable. Yeah, this is not about like which fr- like studio is better. This is just the first movie from that studio. Yeah, so I, exactly. I, think I, have to, I have to think of that because I'm taking too many things into account. Uh, speaking of, oh, dude, this next one, too many things into account. WAG, which is Warner Animation Group. That oh, was Jesus. founded. In, it, this is a little confusing. I have to do a little bit of digging for this. This yeah, used yeah. to be, so was, WAG was founded in 2013 but it used to be Warner Bros. feature animation. So it's kind of like two studios that kind of did like this rebrand. It's really interesting. So Warner Bros. feature animation was founded in 1970, technically, because before that, mm-hmm. it, it was like, it was kind of like a spinoff of Warner Television Studio, which like, what? Here, this is like the official Wikipedia description. Warner Bros. Animation Inc. is an American animation studio, which is a part of the Warner Bros. Television Studios division of Warner Bros., a flagship of Warner Bros. Discovery. As a successor to Warner Bros. Cartoons, which was active from 1933 to 1969, the studio is closely associated with Looney Tunes and blah, 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 blah. So I think it started as Warner Bros. Cartoons with Looney Tunes in like the 30s to the 60s. Then that was changed or they had a spinoff which became warner bros feature animation which was the 70s till early 2000s i think and then that disbanded and a few years later warner animation group wag founded which was 2013 so there's kind of it's hard to pinpoint what like the first film was (laughs) i can simplify it okay you know that meme with the astronaut where it's like, it's all Warner Bros. It always has been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. That's literally it. <laughs> um, but if I'm just kind of, again, thinking about like Illumination and everything that came around 2007, if we're kind of continuing that timeline, WAG is the most recent iteration of um, Warner Animation. And that was founded 2013. Their first movie was the Lego movie, which I think is a solid movie, but we oh, have to take into consideration that. They've also had like decades of experience technically so, making movies before this, so it's technically not their first one, but yeah, it's the first one under this new rebrand. Where is Space Jam and all this? Yeah, Space Jam was actually the first one that Warner Bros. Feature Animation did. Yeah, uh, which I, th- I think, which was n- in 1996. It, that's like not fully animated, is it? No, it's mixed. It's it's mixed with right. People. So we we shouldn't really include it, but I feel like it was also just curious for for placement. Yeah, if you're not including Space Jam, the first one that warner whatever the one before wag was was cats don't dance in 1997 i've never heard of that i've one. heard of that <laughs> yeah but i'm trying to remember it honestly i was looking at the list of films when it was called warner bros feature animation before it was called wag the only one i've ever seen was the iron giant i haven't even heard of like any yeah. of the rest so i think the rebrand served them well and they did some good stuff with it since then dude the iron giant was legendary yeah i mean freaking brad bird man come on yeah you can't miss Mm. Mm. but i'm i, I kind of want to talk about wag yeah. and the lego movie um yeah i think that's a solid first one i think we have to caveat it that again it's not technically the first one because they've had years of experience at warner brothers doing other animated features well, but well, lego here's movie. The, what year what year did it come out 2014 so here's the thing at that point technologies it's getting to a point to where it's a lot easier more accessible for people it's not to like where it is now to where you can have like a single dude do like a whole cgi sequence and all that uh-huh. you still need to have your teams and dedicated artists but it's getting much, much, much easier for people to like understand the technology and know what they're doing. Yeah. With that, we can we can say yeah they have we can caveat it and that they have all this experience, but at the same time, it's 
I'm not really going to consider that. I'm, it's more about just the product itself. Yeah, and it's a good product, in my opinion. Because I'm also on, on the other end of it, too. Rap City Street Kits. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> what studio you did can, this? Can, I don't even know. But you can have, like, all the voices. You can have right. all the ideas. All the talent. But still, it just doesn't come together. Yeah. Maybe maybe talent well, is the wrong sure the word. Talent was there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That was 2002. I don't know what studio did that. I think it was like a pri. There's like, it was like a couple of dudes. J Rose that like were Production. Like, yeah. J Rose Production and Wolf Tracer Studios. Okay. Anyways. Uh, anyway. Yeah. So the Lego Movie 2014 <laughs> out of the gate very strong in my opinion. I'm a little biased about this one. I have to I have to put this disclaimer because when I first moved out to California back in 2020 for to intern for my college program. I actually interned for Rideback, which was the production company that produced this film. The reason I actually sought the internship out at that company was because I saw, I was just on IMDb, like looking at who did, who worked on cool movies that I liked and the Lego movie, this was the production company that like developed it. So, so, and then I cold emailed them and then reached out and they got back to me and I interned for them, which was so sick. Like, dude, they're, they're, um, office was so cool like they had the whole wall of just like legos where you could like build on it and stuff um and then like the outside there was like this big mural of um big lego like the astronaut guy like very Mm -hmm. artistic and colorful and then they also produced at that point they had just produced the live action aladdin movie and they had a the the actual rug like the magic carpet on their like conference table so whenever i was like a little intern setting up waters for like uh meetings i was i would put it on a coaster just around the magic carpet and one time i touched the magic carpet too <laughs> i don't know how to feel about that because thinking about that in like a like contextual sense like you know those guys that like go out and kill bears and they have like the bear yeah, yeah. and all that yeah it's just it like was, a trophy the carpet's living the technically yeah it's like a trophy <laughs> yeah yeah i didn't really think about it then i was just like oh cool the magic carpet <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then Will Smith slapped people. Anyways, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh my god! But um, yeah, just sorry. I'm just I, I went on a little tangent there, but I I, I could do a whole other podcast on just like my experience interning for ride. Well, honestly, probably you should. I think that'd be honestly, cool yeah. Because I could talk about the time I. Uh, met because it was like a whole campus the rideback ranch is what it was called i worked at rideback which was like the main office but they had like a division of wag in there and they were actually working on the next space jam when i was interning there so i saw a bunch of concepts hung up and they were like working on it and they're like you can't show anyone this or talk talk about it and i was like oh okay luckily it's out now so i think i can talk about it <laughs> um <laughs> but there, there are a couple projects i still can't talk about that uh I got to like read some scripts for, which is pretty cool. Um, cool. But the, also on the campus was Marco Robbie's production company. I think it's something bunny something. I don't know. Uh, but her husband runs it. And I actually got to shake Margot Robbie's husband's hand at like an event when I stayed late to help out. <laughs> at. So by the transitive property, I have touched Margot Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> that makes Lego movie an 11 out of 10 for me. Just kidding. <laughs> oh my God. No, I think I think that would have been up for me too, honestly. Though, <laughs> <laughs> because you shook my hand, so by the chance, <laughs> yeah, true. Oh my god! <laughs> you also, Dana, we both touched my Robbie. <laughs> oh, that feels so bad. All right, anyways, let's get back to Lego <laughs> movie. Back, back to the tank. Back to the tank. Back to the tank. So, uh, Lego uh, movie, honestly, really solid. I might get. Yes. It might be in the nines yeah, it's for plastic. me. Like, I think. I mean, Chris Pratt. Everyone's upset about his like vocal performance. I think that this is one of his better ones, and I'm, it gives me faith for him to be in Mario and Garfield because of what he did back in the Lego movie, you know? Wait, and Garfield? He's doing Garfield now, too? Yeah, he's Gar- you didn't know that? He's also playing Garfield. There's going to be a new Garfield movie? Yeah. When was that announced? That was announced a while ago. Uh, Chris Pratt, Garfield. Yeah, it's coming out in 2024. Oh, Samuel L. Jackson is in that, too? What? He's John. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, Bill Murray's so back in it i know he was the voice of garfield in like garfield tale of two kitties that was a good movie um <laughs> i don't know when this was announced uh it looks like august are they going to be getting into the garfield multiverse <laughs> <laughs> uh, take from, him from the comics take from him when he was cgi for a little bit you know that'd be awesome okay but no we keep on going on these tangents lego movie so the one thing i liked about the lego movie was that it was made out of legos this was a great film well obviously like yeah there's, there's the nostalgia there obviously with that connection yeah but this was like one of the first films where they they uh, properly showed what combination of PBR, global illumination, what and is like PBR. I know that's a drink. Phys- physically based rendering. 
which is like pretty much the method of how you get oh. things to look like it's real. Um, I looked up PBR with- and it says professional bull riders it's just sports circuit <laughs> <laughs> company for bull riding no so like this is how they make the plastic look like it's plastic because they're the way that works is you're mimicking how the subatomic surfaces are on yeah. materials like i remember like the, the reason detail why and, like, the scratches of the yeah, legos dude were on the legos incredible that's, that's i remember that, that first work. trailer i was like oh my god like i thought it was stop i couldn't tell if it was stop motion or like cg that for the first like that, i still that, i for, that's the fir- the for like months <laughs> yeah yeah but it was that, that in combination with the camera work. Yeah. That's what really did yeah. it. Yeah. Because they, I mean, they specifically yeah. did camera work and angles and designs to make it feel like it was a camera stop that motion, was yeah. in like a Lego building or within stop motion. Yeah. So, I think I think just yeah. the craftsmanship of the Lego movie, it was talked about back then. I think it deserves to be brought up more often now. Like I feel like it's been not forgotten, but like I haven't heard people talk about it recently. But that is just a solid movie. I think that honestly might be yeah. in my top three for first agreed. movies. Definitely agreed. With I the would, caveat that it's technically not Warner's first animated movie, but yeah, I don't, I don't even care about that. I'm gonna put it at an eight point six. I would say eight point seven, actually. All right. See, now you're getting it. Now you're getting it. <laughs> <laughs> when I get close to agreeing with Daniel, now you understand. Now you're thinking smart. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So, all right. Interesting. So next on my list, I've got Netflix, which is a little weird because. They're doing a lot of collaborations where, like, they're te- it's technically their film. A lot of their animated movies are their films, but I think they're, like, outsourcing to other studios, so it's not technically their yeah. first So they're kind of film. technically acting more like a publisher in that case. Right. But, yeah. but, yeah, so but their first one they published that was, like, under their umbrella was Klaus. So I have to give it props. Yes. Dude, Klaus was – I finally watched it this last season. I know. Season. I'm so happy you did. I, I can't – I'm so mad you made me wait so long to talk about it with you. <laughs> it It is a masterpiece. Yeah. A beautifully, beautifully animated masterpiece. Yeah. I still haven't watched the, actually the behind the scenes. I've seen some of the stuff I've seen college, some of it. But it's been a while. So I need to look up on how they did the rendering methods for some of the things there. What do you – do you rank Lego Movie or Klaus for like – which one do you rank as number one uh, as a top out of those I'm two? I'm going to rank Lego Movie higher. I think I am too. But it's really because of the technical aspects. Yeah, yeah. Which don't get me wrong, Klaus had a lot of technical aspects in it as well with how it was doing its rendering, uh-huh. based off of what I remember from college. But um, it's very slight, very slight in my opinion. Well, it's not even that it's it's leaning into. I'm saying the difference is very slight in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Between yeah, yeah. like the rankings, I agree. I agree. Yeah, no, that I, that I do agree with. Sorry, I probably would give it a class would probably be like an eight point five, a solid eight point five. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I'll give it an eight point five five. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, I think I think Netflix. Yeah, I think they for Klaus they co-produced it with Sergio Pablo's Animation Studios, who I think is also doing another one. But uh, I like that studio a lot. I think their Netflix's strategy to, is to hire talented filmmakers. And so, like, I think they might be like more hands off. Like, I'm not certain, but like, of this list of anime, I looked at the list of like Netflix animated features that they like technically produced, and like Klaus was not really. I don't know how much they actually contributed to that with the actual animation. And then Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, I think they were more hands off. They just let Guillermo del Toro like do his thing, which do his is thing. good. Yeah, I'm glad they did. I'm glad they didn't like meddle yeah. in that. I think there are cases where Netflix, like, once they get, like, they know they have something good, they just kind of are hands off. Like, I think Stranger Things, I don't, I haven't heard stories of, like, oh, there, there's too much studio involvement, blah, 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 whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, no, so I totally think, agree. I think Netflix, which, for all the which is nice because it works. Yeah, I think it's, it, yeah. it seems like a decent space here if you're an established filmmaker that Netflix will let you do, like, what you want, which can be good and bad. But, uh, yeah, I think the first, I, I was looking on that list, the first film not co produced with anyone that was, like, purely Netflix that I saw was sea beast last year which i thought was decent i still haven't seen that it's oscar nominated so yeah i need to watch it i've seen snippets and i like the animation style i just haven't like seen the whole thing so Dude, i can't professionally I'm, read it i really like the the beginning like towards the middle and end it kind of like lulls and drags a little bit the pacing's a little off but the beginning there's like a there's a sequence where it's just like the, you it sets up the world as this world mm-hmm. of like pirates that are um, just like really good at killing monsters and like hunting monsters and it's just so dope to see them like jumping around the ship and like just being really good at hunting monsters like they're just mm-hmm. you can tell that they're like seasoned at this like they know what to do in every they're emergency seasoned. scenario 
semen. But yeah, I, I think that part was really cool. I really liked that. So um, I think that's a decent first fully them produced. But Klaus is a really solid first step um, yeah. for Netflix. Again, kind of more maybe like a like a distributor more instead of a or like publisher versus animator itself, but still want to give it props. Yeah, um, agreed. We've had a good stretch of good movies, so now uh, the last one I have on my list is Paramount, <laughs> um, <laughs> which uh, I I think it's interesting because I don't think they like officially were producing movies. I think they were like kind of in collaboration with like uh cbs and viacom and nickelodeon so they didn't really form mm -hmm. paramount animation until more recently in like 2013 ish or something like that i didn't actually look this mm -hmm. one up uh or like write this one down but the first one they did was like under that title was spongebob the spongebob movie sponge out of water so not the good first spongebob movie the second one which is uh. not as bad as the most recent one the third one but but the second one <laughs> what are your thoughts on that one i I don't. I don't. Even, I saw your eye roll. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it, dude. That's how I feel about it. Damn, we're on a you podcast where we talk about. It. I'm sorry. <laughs> I. It's. It's. I don't even remember if I'm being that honest. Like it's. It was so bad. It tastes in my. I weren't. Is that the one where they're in the fish tank? It was founded in 2011. On the surface. Uh, this is the one where they started doing. They did like a three. They were. They come on the surface. and They're like superheroes, and they have like they're like 3D animated. Oh Jesus! Yeah, no, I didn't even see that one. Oh, you know, I I will give my kind of basic rundown i remember being very excited to see this movie uh like when it came out because i remember i loved the first spongebob movie, movie when i was a kid and i think this was a this came out 2015 so it was a, about the age i was like 16 i was kind of like at that point where like i'm starting to mature but i was like still trying at some points to like when that came out i was like i want to cling on to my youth here whatever so i saw it i wanted to like feel like a kid again and yeah. At certain parts, it did give me some excitement about like, yeah, this is the old SpongeBob movie, but uh, uh, but it also was like, all right, you're an adult now. This sucks. <laughs> so, it was. I mean, I that's know. the thing with with the old writing, you know, because like even with the with the OG SpongeBob movie, it was uh, I mean, just the OG writing in general. It was more sarcastic and satirical. So like, even if you sarcastic. were like an adult viewer, you could like uh -huh. get the punchlines and like enjoy. Yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The newer ones are just freaking gag shows. Yeah. And it's it's all right. terrible. I'm kind of surprised at how many newer studios there are here, like in this, li this list of studios we listed. Like, a lot <laughs> of these popped up within the last five to, like, 20 years. Do you think, like, any more will emerge or pop up in oh, the future? yeah. Yeah? Are you kidding me? Yeah, dude. This I'm is excited just for that. the beginning. This is literally just the beginning, which is crazy to think about. Yeah, dude. Let's form our own animation studio. What would we name it? Jake, I already have my own game studio. <laughs> I'm, we're making... <laughs> I could very easily transition, but if it wasn't going to be Dark Crest, um... Oh, God. We can do the, the like, SKG. We'll just do SC or CS or something like that. We can't do CS because that's computer science. We'll do SC. Yeah. So, we'll, we'll do something SC. SC. Yeah. Um... I feel like we need a third one in there. SC. Who will we drag in? We're, who is, who's uh, going to be our Geffen? Because I remember Spielberg and Katzenberg, but I didn't remember G. So who's going to be our, like, tag on at the end there? Uh, add Evan. <laughs> okay. <G. laughs> I don't know. SCL. Yeah. It's cool. Is that, like, a disease? I don't know. Like a disease. <laughs> All right. That, that's this why, one... that, that's because our animations are so sick. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, it has to happen now, Daniel. All right, all right. That those were all the ones I had. Was there, are there any I'm like forgetting of like big major studios? Well, I was thinking about like um like uh who did Coraline? That was Ardman Animation, and I know they've kind of collabed with DreamWorks a bit, but yeah, Ardman has done. I think that was Ardman. Or maybe no, it was Leica. That was Leica. Sorry. Yes, yes. I feel like we should talk about Leica. Okay. It was Leica's um, first? I haven't done any research on this. I. I'm quickly looking it up. I think their first one was Coraline in 2009. Uh, okay, so yeah, that's what I was on the market on. They're, oh, their core headquarters are in Oregon? Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know they're that. They're like, we gotta, we gotta be different. No, I like that. <laughs> Wait, yeah. what the fudge? Phil Knight owns Leica? That's the founder of Nike. What the heck? How did this... Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> the things you'll <laughs> discover... <laughs> Oh, wait, oh, yeah, I'm reading this quick. In the 90s, uh, Will Vinton Studios, mm -hmm. known for stop-motion films and commercials, sought founds for more feature-length films and brought in outside mm -hmm. investors, which included Nike Inc. owner Phil Knight, 
whose son Travis Knight worked at the studio as an animator. So, oh, so Phil Knight's son worked as an animator, and then Phil Knight invested in it. Nepotism. That's pretty cool. Not gonna no, lie, just kidding. That's, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in- very interesting. Okay, that's really cool. That that's um, it was named after the dog sent to space by the Soviet Union in 1957. Yep, I knew that. Okay, cool. That's really interesting. Yeah, I, Phil Knight is from Oregon, so I mean that makes sense. Their HQ is there. Cool. That's very interesting. I mean, but yeah, so no, I think yeah. Coraline was great. Um, I love, I feel like, I mean, I thought we were going to talk about like a lot more stop motion stuff here too, but that's why I feel like we need to bring in Leica because Leica does a lot of amazing stuff in that regard. Yeah. Um, I feel like Coraline was a good. The photography list isn't too extensive, but. Um, it wasn't too extensive, but like it had. But they, yeah, they have good quality. I feel like quality the story was well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like that. Just like make a film every like couple years. That That's the dream, man. You know, just yeah. make a studio and they just make decent movies every few years yeah <laughs> make a movie make money run out of money repeat make a new movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i mean maybe we can do another episode where we jump into like smaller studios but these were kind of like the big hitters kind of studios slash publishers that i wanted to discuss um yeah. is there any other ones you want to bring up we can talk about like tim burton films and stuff like that too but that's that's in the uh, same vein as like and stuff but yeah that's what i'm saying so like i i think we're good i think we right. covered a lot of the bigger Let's let's Bigger go do, boys. let's go through do a final ranking. Um, yeah. my number one I think is Pixar. Yeah, like come on. My number two, oh dude, I don't want to give it to Netflix just because it's Netflix, but Klaus is really good. And I, but I think we put the Lego Movie above that anyways. Um, but I yeah. think for Foundation, are you gonna say Snow White or are you gonna put anything above Snow White? What did I rank? Yeah, let, Snow let me White let me go at. through all of them again. So Disney had Snow White, Pixar yep. had Toy Story, uh, DreamWorks had Ants. Blue Sky had Ice Age. Sony had Open Season. Illumination had Despicable Me. WAG had the Lego movie. Netflix had Klaus. And Paramount had the SpongeBob movie. I think the SpongeBob movie is at the bottom. <laughs> Definitely a bottom. That's going to be like a... I mean, I haven't even seen it, so I can't rank it. But if I was to rank it, I'd probably give it... 4.1. Okay. I'd say... That's being generous. 3.8. Okay, so Paramount, SpongeBob out, SpongeBob out of Water is the bottom. Then I might say DreamWorks, honestly. Ants, it's, it was just, literally yeah because they just crapped it out. Like literally, they have admitted to just crapping it out. <laughs> like so, it's not that. At great. least they're owning it. You know, that's the thing. Yeah, true. You know, um, so. and then I might have to say at this point, like they start getting decent. Like Open Season, I think might be my next one, but it's not like a bad yeah. movie. You know, it's just the rest are yeah, no, a lot agreed. better. I think a lot they had good yeah. swings out of the gate. So I think I'm gonna say Open Season next. Then. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Ice Age we said, then uh, then Despicable Me. Yep. Then I would say, I'm not sure if I'd put Disney around this point. Disney, either Snow White or maybe Klaus. I think I put, might put Klaus and then Lego Movie, Disney, Pixar. Agreed. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I was uh, like, thinking about that for a second there. I was like, do I agree with that? Yeah. Is that yeah. Nice <laughs> with the rankings? I was like, no, that, that's on point. Yeah. All right, so out of all the animation studios, which one had the best first movie? Pixar. We're going to say Pixar. Pixar, I think, with Toy Story. Also, like, I think I would put the Lego movie higher, but it, like, had three times, three tries to get because of all the Warner whatever stuff. And Yeah. Yeah. And then Paramount, dude, a lot of misses. Uh, I want to ask you. It's also interesting to see. Oh, here, you ask your question. I'll I'll bring up my point. I was going to ask which one... We said Paramount had the worst movie. I was going to ask, what do you think is the most innovative studio right now? So we were talking about like their first movies. That That's kind of what I was going to ask you. Yeah. Because yeah. I was going to say, it's, inter- it's interesting that this is like the origin, but like seeing like the trends. Yeah, like the evolution. These, like we said DreamWorks is really studios low, have been going. But I think they're towards the top right now. They're going now. up. Yeah. yeah. So, but innovation wise, that is tough because Pixar had Sony such with early Spider-Verse. Strides. And then, yeah, yeah. But That's Sony still with like also the most recent big and Puss in Boots recently. Hotel Transylvania three and the Emoji movie. <laughs> okay, yeah, but <laughs> but no, like innovation wise, like pushing the actual medium with animation with those specific films, like Puss in Boots and and um, Spider Verse. Yeah, Spider Verse. Yeah, like the techniques involved in those films. Like I I will not ever stop talking about it. I'm gonna be an old yeah. fart. And be like, back in my day, I was Spider Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, dude. Give me that film about Spider. I'll be. J- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be J- 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 Jameson. Jameson. Yeah. yeah. So 
Uh, your, your, what is your answer to that? Like, what do you think is the most innovative studio right now? Oh, Sony. Sony? Yeah. Yeah. I think, with, I think uh, and a lot of it is like Lord and Miller right now pushing that envelope. Yeah. Um, I think DreamWorks, though, is like, again, they're kind of following suit with Spider-Verse, like taking inspiration from that. But I think they were doing their own thing. And yeah, they definitely are. They're definitely bringing in more. With bad guys. More graphical. Puss in Boots. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think, oh, yeah. I, I think I'm going to give it Puss to you, though, with, with Sony what was right I now. What? what was I saying? But yeah, yeah I, I was. I, was, I know. I was. Being yeah, I think you were thinking but... Spider Verse and Mitchells versus Machines, maybe. Yeah, because they both have the same like yeah. that style. Yeah, yeah, or aspects of that style. Yeah. yeah, I think we should do an episode where it's what is the best. So we were talking about what is the best first movie from each studio. I think we should go through and say what is the best movie from each studio. So like that doesn't matter yeah. where it came out, but like we'll say I, I like I for Pixar, I'd probably be like. Incredibles or like Wally or something like that, and then yeah. like Sony, we could say Spider Verse, and just kind of go through and be like, okay, well, for like those other ones, like I don't know, uh, like Paramount, what's like, that? How, best how one? do their peaks rank? Which is kind of, I feel like we're gonna like be charting out like mountains here, you know? Yeah, it'd be interesting like, if like some of these, like I don't know, it, Wag, I haven't looked at that filmography, but Lego Movie could have been their peak. Like I don't know, I need to look at what yeah. they've done. Um, it's just a slope; they're on a ski slope. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to jump into the next segment? Yeah. So uh, we're doing TTTT this week. We're going to try a new thing. Um, I'm thinking where instead of doing like quirky query, TTTT and the draft all at once and try to cram everything at the end, we're going to do like a cycling mm-hmm. thing where we're like we do one a week. So this week we're going to do TTTT and then next week we'll try to do one of the other ones. And we're just going to, we're going to try, we're trying to change things up, see how people react. Anyways, yeah. did you know that Sylvester Stallone almost didn't play Rocky? Really? Why? So when Sylvester Stallone wrote the script for Rocky, he had zero money to his name. So when he started pitching the script to executives, he was extremely desperate. A few of them eventually saw potential in the script and offered to buy it off of him for $265,000, but under the condition that someone else would star as Rocky. That amount of money, especially back in the 70s, would have been life-changing for Stallone. But he truly believed that he had the emotional connection needed to the character and that he would seriously regret it if he was not the one to play Rocky. So yeah. he spent a lot of time, a lot more time shopping the script around and negotiating without compromising and eventually found the studio Chartoff Winkler Productions that would produce it for him and let him star in it. Rocky was obviously a huge success and it launched Stallone into superstardom and the rest is history. So I think he made the right choice. <laughs> yeah, dude, dude that, uh, that is crazy to think about. Like imagine if it wasn't him, like who would it be? Yeah, like, you know? it would be the Italian stallion today. Me, I'm a time it's traveler. Just yeah, yeah. It's Schwarzenegger. <laughs> That'd be crazy if that. Yeah, I just, he doesn't have the build of a boxer, really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, ready for patron shoutouts? Yeah, hit me with them. Cubex stars music. Boost Scott Patron, Lori, Frank, Vic, Lisa, Evan, Tony. Thank you so much for pledging the tier. They get you the shout out. If you like to support us over on Patreon, link is down in the description. You get the audio episode early. Plus benefits, cool personal jazz, and more. Thank you seriously, sincerely to our patron supporters. We really seriously appreciate you. Are you ready for cool comments? Yeah, who said what this time? So, Zach Henry on our Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania episode uh, said, Ant-Man's autobiography, Look Out for the Little Guy in the movie, is being turned into a real book that you can now pre-order and comes out <laughs> sometime in September. Can't wait to get a copy of. That's really cool. I kind of want to... I hope they do an audio book like the actual... Like they, like Paul Rudd had. With Paul with Rudd? Paul Rudd, yeah. That would, I would be so Because I have an audible awesome. subscription. I would 100% do that. Wait, we should. I if that's not happening, that needs to happen. I will contact Paul Rudd myself and make it happen. <laughs> um, Zach Henry also commented a second comment on that same episode. Quantum Mania said, "I would give Ant Man three a seven out of ten. The comedy was spot on, and I just love Ant Man in general. I do agree with everything you guys said though about it. Though I still really enjoyed it, and Jonathan Majors was amazing as Kang. Yes. Yeah, I've had a lot of mixed opinions. A lot of people that I know in real life, like." that I've talked to are like, yeah, we really like it. But a lot of like critics and movie reviewers that I follow and interact with online are kind of like, this isn't that great. And I'm kind of more leaning towards the, this isn't that great camp. I think you're yeah, leaning well, more the, towards the, the, I like it camp. Well, no, here's the thing. I've been thinking, the more I've been thinking about it since I've watched it, the more I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. yeah that make that's sense. what like, I was I texted saying. you the other day. <laughs> like, I was like, how did Kang, like once they turn on the satellite thing, shrink them down if he can shrink them down why doesn't he like go up shrink himself you know? up <laughs> grow up you know <laughs> grow up so, like grow up <laughs> <laughs> but you know what i mean like like if he can why not do it so like he can't can't <laughs> but he can't that doesn't so, work as as good as the text <laughs> it, yeah it doesn't <laughs> i made that but, joke but, as a text but yeah 
but here, here's my ultimate conclusion of it, right? So I think it is a fun movie. Like, you're able to go to this crazy world. Yeah. There's action, sure. Does it make sense? No. no the writing's actually <laughs> honestly pretty bad as you, if you yeah. dissect it. You but, were defending uh, it a bit. I was like, I don't know. I was, but, like, the, the, again, like, the more the more and more I look at it, I'm like, this, uh, no. Yeah. And here, here's the biggest problem with all that, too. I feel like good elements they, too, need, they need to have a serious sit-down with writers and with like actual astrophysicists and like uh quantum theorists right oh okay so that way they can come to a comprehensive I, understanding of how to write everything i don't know if that's the biggest issue like i i don't I, the science behind it i can kind of forgive i just don't personally look at that stuff too much i think the course emotional story between cassie and scott was my biggest issue but i understand like for someone looking at it through the lens of like the science is off that would be frustrating but i argue like it's a comic book movie dude like the science isn't gonna be i mean foolproof yeah like, i get it, that it doesn't but have like, to be like interstellar it doesn't need to be interstellar but there needs to be it needs to make enough sense it doesn't need to make a, like a total sense i think neil degrasse tyson actually made a good point about this it doesn't need to make logical sense at all but if it roots in science it will work okay it, like people have a connection there so yeah all right yeah. um it's also one of the biggest reasons why i didn't like light year honestly they, yeah they messed up the time dilation stuff there i'm like that doesn't make any sense um speaking so, of uh yeah. comments with cool comments uh i would like if you are so inclined to please leave a comment on your thoughts on us changing up pre-banter in the beginning. Let us know what you think of that. I just, I really like the idea of just kind of getting right into the heat, the meat of the episode instead of like kind of lollygagging around. Like you click on a, the title of the video is like Ant-Man, the Wasp, Quantum Mini Review or whatever. And then like we talk about like the How to Train Your Dragon News forever for like 10 minutes, which I do enjoy, but like, yeah. I don't yeah. know. What was our jingle? Action, action, jump right into action. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I think we should eat a spoonful of peanut butter next time to, like, commemorate it. Commemorate yeah. the send-off of pre major peanut butter. I got my chalk chalk, dude. All from, right. from Cape May. I nice. got it. Oh, so, wait, I'm, still? I'm okay. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah, I keep on getting more. Oh, I know you still order some. That's cool. Yeah, there's a peanut butter shop yeah. in Cape May. It's, like, just pretty good. All right. Ready for the introduction? Yeah, tell me when. When. We just talk about whatever we want to talk about, and now we're done. Thank you so, so much, everyone, for listening. We really, seriously, sincerely appreciate it. We'll be back next time. I think Creed 3 is coming out, so we might be covering that. I'm not sure. It depends on if we see the first couple Creeds and stuff. We yeah, were going to do that this got, week, got, but time got away from me. Time. Yes, yeah, like same. Kang. All right, see you next time. Goodbye. Okay, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs>